Yeah, good morning, students. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the lecture twenty six. Uh, the topic is sexual hormone disorders. So uh, that is we have to discuss in both females and males. In females, uh, mainly we are going to discuss uh, about the disorders. That is the first polycystic ovarian syndromes, and second is called hirsutism. Third is androgen excess, and fourth is menopause. These are the four same uh, syndromes associated. Uh, with the female sex hormone disorder whereas in males uh, the sim the symptoms is hypogonadism first second is erectile dysfunction and the third one is gynecomastia so these are the sex hormone disorders in males and females so first we are going to discuss in the female the topic is female uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome this uh, disorder is uh, characterized by oligomenorrhea oligomenorrhea is nothing but it is a irregular menstruation cycles or amenorrhea means there is absence of menstruation cycles with the symptoms of hyperandrogenism there is more uh, high androgen hormone level in the female that is uh, androgen we know that it is a male uh, sex hormone so uh, that consists of testosterone so if the level of androgen is more in the female then it is going to show the symptoms of you know, polycystic ovarian syndromes and it also causes acne and hirsutism what is hirsutism it is extra male like hair growth in female this is the most common endocrine disorder in young females so we need to do blood test uh, uh, and if you do there will be more uh, level of uh, testosterone hormone and dheas what is dheas it is a dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate it is a male sex hormones uh, that is androgens or uh, that present in both men and women so dheas is a dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate cysts may be present in the ovaries but are not necessary for diagnosing this disorder so cyst uh, this is the polycystic ovarian cyst syndrome so there is many cyst formation take place in the ovary as you can see that this is the normal ovary okay um, whereas in this you can see there is more circular structure present in the ovary that is called as cyst so there are many that's why it is called as polycystic ovary so that is a cyst so underlying causes of this disorder is thought to be insulin resistance uh, that is poor response of body tissues to insulin so one of the important underlying reasons uh, for this polycystic uh, ovary syndrome is insulin res resistance therefore blood sugar and insulin levels may also be elevated in polycystic ovary syndromes PCOS can result in uh, obesity, infertility, diabetes, heart disease, and uterine cancer. Exercise, weight loss, and medications can be used to improve insulin sensitivity. Menstruation cycle can also be regulated with uh, birth control pills. So generally, this is the pathophysiology of PCOS, where we are starting with genetic obesity sedentary lifestyles and intrauterine androgen exposure that leads to increased gonadotropin releasing hormones in pulsatile release and insulin resistance gonadotropin releasing hormone is a hormone which is responsible for the release of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary gland so this increase lh and fsh ratio and this insulin resistance includes uh, more uh, insulin that is hyperinsulinemia uh, this increase lh fsh increase lh which acts on theca cell theca cell are a group of endocrine cells in the ovary which synthesize androgens and this uh, hyperinsulinemia causes increase androgenic enzymes and decrease shbg SHBG is uh, sex hormone binding globulin uh, which is a protein produced by the liver that transport the hormones androgens in the blood 
in the biologically active form so hyperinsulinemia increase uh, more androgenic enzymes and decrease this protein this cause androgen excess and because of this androgen excess uh, PCOS problem is coming and then this starts giving the hirsutism acne and alopecia alopecia is the loss of hair and it causes an ovulation and polycystic ovaries and then these are the some symptoms associated with PCOS second problem is hirsutism uh, what is hirsutism it is the growth of excessive hair in a male pattern like a male pattern this uh, like the growth of hair in female on the face chest abdomen and back, back this is usually due to the increased production of androgens when females start producing a more androgen that is male sex hormone then this hirsutism problem starts disorder in which hirsutism is seen uh, uh, that is maybe because of polycystic ovarian syndrome that we already discussed then congenital adrenal hyperplasia then ovarian tumors and adrenal tumors congenital adrenal hyperplasia uh, actually it result from the mutation of the genes uh, the genes which is responsible for some enzymes uh, require for the production of glucocorticoids or sex steroids from the cholesterols by the adrenal gland so that is called as congenital adrenal hyperplasia then ovarian tumors or adrenal tumors blood tests are used to help determine a cause what is the main cause uh, for hirsutism occasionally there is no cause found for the hair, hair growth so such uh, if the cause is not found then such kind of hirsutism will be called as idiopathic hirsutism then medical treatment varies by underlying causes of the hirsutism so treatment is done according to what is the cause what is the cause so finding the cause and treating the cause then topical treatment uh, include electrolysis and laser treatment to decrease the hair growth so this is the hirsutism that is the growth of more hair in female due to more androgens that is male hormone that is androgen excess are uh, referred to the overproduction of male hormones in female and this can result from the ovarian or adrenal tumors other uh, disorders such as polycystic ovarian syndrome cushing syndrome it is a syndrome where there is more production of cortisol hormone then hyperprolactinemia uh, hyperprolactinemia is nothing but increased prolactin hormone and we know that prolactin hormones uh, stimulate breast milk production after childbirth and congenital adrenal hyperplasia can cause extra male hormones to be produced in female in women androgen excess can cause hirsutism that is excessive uh, hair growth acne male pattern baldness or menstruation cycle irregularity and infertility diagnosis is generally made through the blood test so we generally do the blood test for finding out the exact reasons then we can do ct scans of adrenal glands and ovaries are occasionally needed treatments vary by the underlying causes of the androgen excess so again we have to treat this uh, problems uh, depending on the reasons which makes uh, more androgen secretion then the fourth problems uh, associated in female is menopause or premenopause and we know that menopause is uh, the stop of menstruation cycle and this usually occurs at the age of uh, 14 book some book they have written 40 some book 45 and some 50 for two to eight years preceding this so before this menstruation menopause starts before previously to that two to eight years uh, the menstruation cycles may be uh, irregular and this referred to the menopausal transition and also called as pre-menopause means before the menopause exactly going to take place before two to eight years so there will be disturbance in the menstruation cycle and that is that condition is known as menopausal transition or premenopause 
as estrogen and progesterone levels uh, decline women may experience a variety of symptoms because you know that uh, this menstruation cycle the which, uh, which also estrogens and progesterones uh, release so that is also going to decrease if menopause is approaching the symptoms can include hot flashes sleep disturbance fatigue irritability decreased sex drive and vaginal drainage and depression so these are some symptoms associated uh, when menopause comes long-term estrogen deficiency can result in osteoporosis uh, if uh, estrogen uh, is going to be deprived or decreased for a long time then it causes it makes the women uh, bones weak that is called as osteoporosis Menopause is generally diagnosed by symptoms through blood test uh, at a time as is the diagnosis. A variety of treatment both estrogen and non-estrogen based can be used to treat menopausal symptoms. So generally after menopause uh, <coughs> where the ovary is not releasing estrogen, the female has to take uh, hormone replacement therapy and they have to take external estrogen. Several clinical trials have raised concern about increased risk of breast cancer. So when the female starts taking uh, from outside the estrogens, that can lead to breast cancer, heart disease, blood clots, and stroke when women uh, treated with hormone therapy. That is uh, some side effects uh, happens uh, when there is ex uh, external hormonal therapy starts in the female. Because of this potential risk, uh, hormone therapy needs to be individualized. So because of this risk, uh, you have to be very careful uh, and according to the individual requirement, we have to give these uh, hormones. Additional non-hormonal uh, based treatments are available for treating symptoms associated with menopause and osteoporosis. So you can see uh, some of the symptoms irregular menses, acne, hirsutism, obesity, acanthosis. Acanthosis uh, is a condition uh, where there is more uh, pigmentation of the skin, uh, black uh, skin in the neck region, then hair loss and infertility and pregnancy loss. Whereas in the male sex hormone disorder first is hypogonadism it refers to the decreased production of testosterone because we know that the testosterone is the sex hormone in the male so if there is a less production then it leads to hypogonadism and this can result from the pituitary gland uh, we know that it is a master gland in the brains for the hormone production and it is not stimulating the testis to make uh, testosterone or the failure of the testicles to produce adequate testosterone so that may be the one of the reasons because of that there is a less production of testosterone when testosterone levels are, levels are low men can experience a decreased libido libido means sex or drive that is opposite sex attraction then erectile dysfunctions then decreased energy then decreased muscle mass and thinning of the bones so, so this all are the these are all the happens when uh, males do not produce enough testosterone. Then testicle size may also decrease and sperm count may also decrease. Then blood testing is done to diagnose uh, hypogonadism and determine the cause. So, then magnetic resonance imaging of the pituitary or testicular biopsies may need needed in some cases to find out the exact reasons uh, why the male is not able to produce uh, required quantity of androgens. Testosterone when low can be replaced by injection and when it is uh, low this external supply of androgens can be done by the injection or in the form of testosterone patches or some topical gels. And second problem associated in a male is erectile dysfunction uh, it is the inability to acquire or maintain an erection that is uh, satisfactory for sexual intercourse and this may also be referred as importance then people start saying that uh, the person is important 
any medical condition which can decrease blood flow for the penis may result in erectile dysfunction because we know that when uh, penis is going to rank there is a lot of blood flow in the penis and it causes erection so any medical condition which is making a less blood flow to the penis can result in erectile dysfunction common cause of erectile dysfunctions are smoking diabetes high blood pressure alcohol and depression the person who smokes the and generally the one of the big, um, worst disadvantage of diabetes than uh, erectile dysfunctions additionally some uh, prescription medications can also and cause some of the side effect of some medication is erectile dysfunctions a physical example as well as history and blood test can help uh, determine the cause of erectile dysfunction when erectile dysfunction is caused by hypogonadism then testosterone replacement therapy may be uh, prescribed testosterone can be given in a patches gel or injection for other causes of erectile dysfunction prescription medications may be tried there are also vacuum erection devices vacuum pump uh, uh, to increase uh, the penile erection then penile injection or penile prosthesis can be recommended what is penile prosthesis it is a kind of penile uh, implants uh, it's a medical device uh, that is uh, surgically implanted uh, within the corpora uh, cavernous of the penis through a surgical process and try to uh, maintain the erection of penis so that is called erectile dysfunction then the third uh, symptoms is gynecomastia or uh, the increase in breast tissues in a man uh, is referred to as uh, gynecomastia so if uh, some male uh, starts uh, showing uh, more breast like a female then it is called as gynecomastia this can occur during puberty and uh, resolve on its own gynecomastia can also be due to medications hypogonadism thyroid disease malnutrition testicular cancer adrenal cancer liver disease or kidney disease the cause of gynecomastia is usually determined by physical example history and blood test additional testing may include a testicular ultrasound or ct scan so male sex hormone disorders uh, mainly we have to write about hypogonadism erectile dysfunction and gynecomastia and for uh, female sex hormone disorder mainly we have to write about polycystic ovarian syndrome hirsutism then androgen excess and menopause so this question comes uh, then you have to explain points uh, related with all this thank you